Hello, this is Dr. Grande. I'm making this video on how to calculate the number of definitions for PTSD, the potential number of types of PTSD definitions we can see. And this is a companion video to another video that I did on this topic, a live action video. But in this one, I wanted to go into Excel and actually show you how I performed the calculations to come up with the total number of possible definitions for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, as I mentioned in the live action video, there's an article on this topic that was published by Gallitzer and Bryant in 2013, and they actually came up with the same number. So that's, I believe, some evidence that this is actually the correct number. And looking at this in terms of mathematics, and statistics and probability, I think this is really the only way to perform this calculation. This is a calculation of the number of combinations without replacement. And I have that equation here. Combinations without replacement equals n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So n is the total number of items and r is the number of items that you want to sample. The without replacement piece means that once a symptom is selected, it can't be put back and selected again, which really makes sense. If you had a number of criteria, say you had three criteria, A, B, and C, and you could meet a mental health disorder diagnosis by having two of those three criteria met, you couldn't select a twice. You'd have to have A and B, B and C, or A and C. Those are the only possibilities there. Now, if it was two or more, you could also have, of course, A, B, and C. So there's actually four possible combinations there. So we would add the two combination calculations together. We would have the three plus the one. So let's take a look here at how we diagnose PTSD in terms of symptom criteria. So post-traumatic stress disorder has actually five major areas. I only have four here. The first one is the qualifying trauma. And that is not used in this calculation because the trauma is required to even really be assessed for PTSD. Without a qualifying trauma, we wouldn't enter into assessment for this disorder. Now, there are four different ways of experiencing a trauma according to the DSM. But again, I'm not gonna use that item here, just intrusion, avoidance, negative mood, and arousal. So then I have this required and total column, right? So in required, we have the number of symptoms at a minimum that somebody would have to meet for this category. So PTSD is a little bit different than a lot of other mental health disorders in that you have to have so many criteria from each category and there are multiple categories. So it makes the calculation that much more complex. So for intrusion, we have this required. So you need at least one symptom of this total. And there are five symptoms under intrusion. Now, of course, two, three, four, or five would also qualify. So I'm going to be calculating all of those and then adding them together. For avoidance, we have the same thing, one, one symptom is required, except here we only have two. So you have one required and two total. And then in negative mood, we have two that are required, a minimum of two out of seven, and arousal two out of six. Now, when we calculate all the possible combinations for intrusion, avoidance, negative mood, and arousal, we have to multiply them together to get the total number of potential post-traumatic stress disorder definitions. So we'll start here with this equation, the combination equation, and I'm gonna set it up so it can be easily autofilled to the right and down. So let's first start with the basic equation. So this will be equal sign and then FACT, that's factorial, that, that's the function for factorial. And then parentheses, I'm gonna want cell D2. So I want the total. So that's n, n factorial. And I'll close that parenthesis. 
So now we have n factorial. So now I'm going to put in forward slash divided by, and then I'm going to open a new set of parentheses. I want this denominator to be in its own set of parentheses to keep the order of operations straight. So here after this parenthesis, it's going to be factorial again. Open parenthesis, and here I'm looking for cell E1 because I want the number of symptom criteria. So I'm going to use these cells up top, E1 through K1 for that. So for this one, it's just going to be 1, so that's E1. Close parenthesis, asterisk for multiplication, and then factorial, again, open parenthesis, and here I want N minus R. So that's going to be D2 minus E1, close parenthesis, and close parenthesis again. Now this actually is technically correct, but it's not the exact calculation I'm going to be using because I want to set this up for autofilling. So I'm going to enter it and then move back into it and edit it. And up here for the times when I see D2, I want to make sure that that column doesn't change, the D doesn't change. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that, meaning it doesn't change when I autofill. Then for the cell reference E1, I want to make sure the row doesn't change here as I autofill to the right, so I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the 1. And again, every time I see E1. So we have both D2 and E1 appearing twice. So I want four total dollar signs up there. And enter that. And you can see for combinations when we have just one symptom criteria out of five, there are five possible ways. There are five possible combinations, which makes sense. Now I'm going to autofill this all the way down and then I'm going to delete. So this isn't going to be final yet, but I'm going to autofill this down so we have one for intrusion, avoidance, negative mood, and arousal. Now, of course, with negative mood and arousal, one isn't an option. But I'm putting it here temporarily so that I can autofill. So now I'm going to autofill all this out to two. And I'm going to go back here for cells E4 and E5 and just delete these. And then go through each one and make sure I have the number of potential symptoms correct. So here for intrusion, one out of five. So I know that one, two, three, four, and five would all be eligible. So I'm going to autofill this out all the way to five. For avoidance, I don't need to autofill this anymore. You just have one and two. That's, that's all we have here, just two symptom criteria under the avoidance category. Now for negative mood, of course, I'm starting at two, and I can have two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I can autofill all the way out to seven. And then similar for arousal except out to six. But there's two symptom criteria at a minimum. So intrusion avoidance, one or more, negative mood and arousal, two or more. So that's why we get this table looking the way I have it here. So now we need to take the sum for each category. So over here in cell L2, the equal sign, sum, and then I'm going to select all these so I can autofill down. It won't hurt anything if these cells are empty. So we have 31. So there's 31 possible combinations of just intrusion, just the intrusion category. And because I set this up correctly, I can just autofill this down, and I get 3 for avoidance, 120 for negative mood, and 57 for arousal. So these are all the combinations for each category. Now in order to determine the total number of potential PTSD definitions, I need to multiply all these together. So down here, this will be equal sign and I'll take the first combination for intrusion, 31, then asterisk, 3, asterisk, 120, asterisk, 57. So 
all four of these multiply together gives me 636,120. As I mentioned, this is the same value that we see in the Glatzer Bryant article in 2013. So this number, 636,120, this is the total number of combinations for PTSD. And one of the reasons this number is so large is because there are these four separate categories, as I mentioned and we have to multiply these together. So if we just had one category or say a few categories like intrusion negative mood of course that would be a much smaller number. But with four categories and then multiplying together particularly because negative mood has 120 and arousal has 57 we get a substantial number. So this is how I perform this calculation. As I mentioned before I believe this is the only accurate way to perform this calculation. I know there are other factors to take into account with the definition of PTSD and you could certainly look at each of the symptoms and analyze how likely they are to occur with other symptoms. This really doesn't take any of that into account. This is just the total number of combinations for post-traumatic stress disorder. If you found this video to be interesting, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it and thanks for watching.